Okay, everybody, thank you so much for joining us um, here today. We're, we're, we're coming together with some, uh, some higher education professionals, some colleagues of ours, uh, to talk a little bit about uh, an event that we have coming up. The uh, Columbia University Center for Veteran Transition and Integration is hosting a virtual college fair for transitioning service members, veterans, and military-connected students on Thursday, October 28th from three o'clock p.m. to five o'clock p.m. Eastern. Again, that's Thursday, October 28th, three o'clock to five o'clock Eastern, 12 o'clock to two o'clock um, Pacific time. And I'm here with uh, two colleagues of mine uh, who know a lot more about this than I do, actually. They work in this space all the time um, and, and help service members and veterans uh, reach their full potential in higher education settings. Emily and Giles, I'm so happy to have you with us. Thank you for your time. And I'm going to have you uh, introduce yourselves to the folks who are who are listening um, so that they have a sense of who's in the room. Emily, can we start with you? Absolutely. Thanks, RJ. Hello, everybody. My name is Emily Ives. I'm the Director of Veteran Services at UCLA, the University of California, Los Angeles. We're a four-year public research university, um, and Veteran Services services all our military-connected students, um, and we offer undergraduate, graduate, and professional degrees here, um, and also have an extension program, um, which offers certificates to military-connected students. So great to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Emily. And Giles, if you could let folks know a little bit about who you are and where you're coming from today. Well, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Giles Eady. I'm an associate dean of undergraduate admission at Emory University in, in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, part of my responsibilities in the Office of Undergraduate Admission is that uh, I am the chairman of the veterans um, recruitment process. And so um, I lead all processes to enroll in um, veteran students at Emory. Um, Emory University is a uh, four-year private institution um, in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, we offer undergraduate degrees as well as uh, graduate degrees. Um, we have nine different schools at Emory University. Um, and we are, I think, for benefit for a veteran, uh, we are situated next door to the Atlanta VA. Um, so we do a lot of things in conjunction with the Atlanta VA at, at Emory University. So I'm um, happy to be here and, and happy to um, assist you in your journey. Thank you so much, Giles. We really appreciate your time. And then again, I, I'm RJ Jenkins. I'm coming from the Columbia University Center for Veteran Transition and Inter Integration. We live at Columbia University, but we are an outward facing organization. And our, our goal is to uh, have conversations, build resources, um, and create connections for transitioning service members and veterans to help them succeed wherever they're at school. Um, and so I'm really, really glad to have this, this group of people together. I do want to be clear, too, uh, these folks who are in the room with us today are here representing their institutions, but they're also here because they're subject matter experts on this process more broadly. Uh, so they're here today to share a little bit of wisdom with us. Uh, those of you who are plugged in are probably already registered for the virtual college fair that will happen on Thursday, October 28th. And we know that's a two hour window. We're expecting 80 to 90 schools to be present, possibly even more, uh, to be present in that virtual space during that time, ready and excited to talk to transitioning service members and military connected students who might want more information in their process to find a right fit school. And so Emily and Giles, question number one. Um, and Emily, I'm gonna start with you. You've got, you, you're, you're approaching this virtual college fair. Um, maybe this is the first time that you've approached an event of this kind. You know, we, we used to go to college fairs and job fairs in person, um, and maybe in some parts of the country we're doing that again, but of course we're doing a lot more virtually now. Um, and so we're in this space, we've got two hours and, and we're, we're thinking about our approach to this kind of an event, right? Um, what would you say uh, to students, and Giles, I'm gonna ask you the very same question, what would you say to students as they think about approaching this kind of an opportunity to connect with colleges and universities? What kinds of things should they have in the forefront of their mind? Um, and, and how should they orient themselves as they think about taking advantage of this opportunity? Great question, RJ. And um, congrats to everybody who's watching this. I mean, the first step to thinking about attending a school is, you know, 
exploring all the different options. And so um, it's a fantastic use of your time to be in a space where you can, you know, uh, meet 80 schools uh, within one platform. It's that's very unique and a fantastic opportunity. Um, when looking at schools and thinking about the approach, you know, look at a variety of different types of schools. Um, look at public, look at private, look at uh, two-year, look at four-year, and depending on what your goals are, um, I think, you know, finding different schools that kind of feel like they gel with you is a very important kind of first thing. Um, also, look at majors. What majors does the university offer? How do they align with the career goal that you're interested in? Are there any alternate majors? Um, you know, is it, do you have to, you know, be an English major or could, is it gender studies could be an option? Are there other opportunities? Um, be open to options. Not every school has every major. Um, and sometimes, you know, you need to think about whether the major is more important or the fit of the school is more important. Um, also, I think um, when you're looking at institutions, think about what connections, uh, what employer connections the university or the institution has, where are they situated? Are they located in an area that's big in tech? If you're wanting to go in the tech field, that seems like a pretty natural fit. Um, if you're wanting to go to entertainment, what employment connections they have with the entertainment industry? Um, also things like graduation rate, um, and, you know, persistence rate, are the students completing, um, you know, their classes, are they graduating and net so, and what, how many years, um, and then what resources are available? Giles mentioned being close to the VA. That's a fantastic, or being close to a vet center. Those are things that are important. The resources and support, um, and services that are provided. Um, additionally, if you have a family, what, what offerings do the university has for things like family housing or for childcare. Um, you know, there's so much to explore and I don't want it to be overwhelming, but it's really exciting. Um, and I think this is the opportunity to ask those questions. Um, you know, at, at College Fairs, it's, we wanna meet you. We wanna learn more about you. And we wanna share all the great resources and services that university has and, and universities have to offer. And so don't be afraid to ask those questions. That's the big thing. I appreciate that. Emily coming in hot here with a with a whole bunch of really, really good information. Right. And what I'm what I'm hearing from you, Emily, is this this kind of important mixture or combination of keeping your mind open. Right. Really trying to keep your options open, but also uh, some due diligence. Right. Being being sure that you're you're picking up some of that information. And, and I assume, Emily, that this college fair is not necessarily the place where all of that due diligence is going to happen. Am I right? Not at all. Not at all. I mean, this is the first step and it's a great step to get exposed. But but also, you know, think of and, you know, Giles, I, I want to also leave you some some space, too. But, you know, also think about, you know, if you're if you meet the college and you're thinking about you're interested in it and want to explore further, like figure out if there is admissions webinars that they have or that they're hosting. And some of them might be general and some of them might be specific to maybe the military connected community. Contact the Veteran Resource Center at that school. Think about um, getting in contact with them. What resources do they have? What's the culture like there? Um, and see if the, you know, admissions office maybe has somebody like Giles, who's kind of a liaison um, to the military connected community who can help answer questions maybe about JST or transcripts or other colleges that you've attended and, and get that information. So, you know, you're making an informed decision about when you when you think about applying to the school. So. Emily, thank you. So Giles, we've got all this good information already on the table, and I'm going to ask you the same question, but of course, you're coming at this from a different angle because you're in the admissions space, right? You're one of these folks who's out there trying to attract and interest uh, qualified students, try to tell the story of your institution, let them know what you're all about. But also, of course, you're in the business of making tough choices about this thing we call fit, right? Whether or not a school is a right fit for a student, whether a student is a right fit for a school. So based on what we already know, um, if you're talking to students who are approaching an opportunity like this, um, you know, I, I'm sure you, you, you'd want to echo a lot of what we've heard, but are there any other things that you think should be top of mind for students? Well, um, I, I think that it's, it's quite natural going into an event like this that you might have your top three um, or top five, whatever uh, number of universities that you want to look at. And those are places that you've already somewhat done research on. Um, if they're in the room, certainly connect with them. Um, but something I always advise um, any student attending a college fair, 
um, however many schools that you've ranked, um, check out that same number of schools that you've not ranked or you don't know anything about. Mm. Um, because a lot of times um, rankings, I, I caution people from staying away from, from rankings and what they might see in the media because uh, rankings are just one person's interpretation of that institution, but it might not be the best fit for you. Um, and a lot of times institutions that you've never heard of could be the better fit for you or, or have better resources for you. So um, certainly try to get to know other places um, because they could, again, serve your needs better. And I understand that this event is just two hours. Um, so it's a lot of uh, drinking water from a fire hydrant. <laughs> uh, so don't try to drink that water from the fire hydrant. You'll drown. Um, right. But if anything, um, of all the places that you're interested in, if, if anything, get contact information so that you can reach back out to the institution um, after the college fair to follow up on, on questions, because you just won't have time to ask uh, and get answers for every single question that you have about that institution. So Giles, this, I appreciate that. This seems to me like a really kind of golden nugget piece of advice, right? In other words, you, you know, you're interested in, um, you're interested in Northwestern or you're, you're interested in UT Austin uh, or, or, or you're interested in the University of Central Florida and you go to their admissions website and sure, there's a lot of information there, right? But it can be hard to know how to, how to get in in there, right? To, it's a little bit, there, are, there may be webinars, there, there may be YouTube videos, there may be an email address or a phone number. But what I'm hearing you say is that this college fair is a really important opportunity for folks to, to, to get a name and an email address that they can use as a little bit of a, a, little bit of a safe harbor um, and maybe a person that they can connect with as part of this process. Is that right? That is absolutely correct. Even if the person in the college fair is not um, in the admission office, the person in that college fair knows someone in the admission office right. and knows how to connect you with, with the appropriate individuals to, to make sure that you are a viable candidate. But certainly, if you don't get contact information, it kind of it kind of dies at this point. And the other thing I want to highlight about what you said, Giles, I think it's so important I, I, and counterintuitive, actually, that you'd go to a college fair and you'd approach a college that you hadn't thought about. Right. Um, I think that's really interesting. Emily, did, as you think about that piece of advice, um, that that to me, that to me resonates. Does it resonate with you, too? Absolutely. I think when, when I'm interacting with military prospective military connected students, I have no assumption that they know everything about the university. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, it's it's expected that you that you don't. Um, and so as Giles mentioned, you know, it's like, it's just as much of a, us, you know, telling you what the university has to offer is you asking us questions. So it's kind of a, it's a conversation. And so just say, um, most people don't know uh, a lot about the university and that's absolutely fine. That's what these college fairs are for is so you can get information and you can ask questions and, there is no stupid question. Um, you know, I've been asked about what restaurants are on campus. I mean, and, and that could be important. You know, that yeah. could be important to kind of know what's available um, just as much as the academics and the career options and the, you know, social life on the campus. So, um, you know, just pl please don't be afraid to ask questions and absolutely get our contact information and anybody that you interact with's contact information. Um, I think expressing that interest is really important and following up with resources is, is it, you know, equally as important too. That's awesome. Um, Emily, one of the things you offered uh, when we started the conversation is a, is a list of questions that you felt were inbounds, right? Uh, I think this is something that I come across with students a lot. They're, they're in this virtual college fair. They're, they're interacting with colleges and universities in many cases for the first time or perhaps they're transitioning from a two-year school to a four-year school. So they've, they've sort of done this once before, um, you know, going into community college or going into a two-year school. And I, I find that students, a lot of times, they maybe have um, questions that are hard questions for the institution, and they're afraid to seem rude, or they're afraid to seem uh, presumptuous in, in asking hard questions. How do you, how do you talk to students who maybe, who maybe have a sensitive question to ask about the school and are not sure how to handle that? 
I, th- I think, that, you know, we all, I think this kind of translates in all different aspects of life, right? Asking the hard questions is never easy. Yeah. Um, but sometimes just being honest about it. Like, I know this is a difficult question. I know you might not be able to answer this question, but, and then go for it. Um, yeah. You know, there's also a little like some some strategy to saying like, you know, if you really want to know how asking questions like how competitive am I or how competitive would I be in this application process? That's kind of a code way to say, like, what's the chances that I would get in? Um, so there's some code language. And so I think that that's it's, you know, asking, you know, definitely contact your veteran resource center um, at the college campus and ask them. So I want to ask this question. How would I go about what's the best way to go about asking this to somebody who works in admission? But I think that like um, that code language is really important. And so asking things um, kind of in a circum circumventing the direct question and asking yeah. kind of around the outside can be very helpful and strategic in, in your admissions kind of um, discovery process. Absolutely. I've also heard of students reaching out not only to the Veteran Resource Center, but perhaps to the SVA chapter on campus. If there's an SVA chapter, connect right with the students who are, who are on the ground. Um, so that, that's two, two sort of interesting ways when we talk about that website that maybe feels a little impenetrable. Here are two different ways to kind of circumvent, as you say, that. Um, Giles, I'm going to ask you a question that I wasn't planning to ask, but it feels appropriate in this moment. And then we're going we're gonna to sort of do some, some last thoughts here. But so you're an admissions professional. Uh, yes. and, and, and a person like you is most likely to be sitting in these, these sort of virtual booths, right? Um, and I'm, I'm always interested, what is it that you're looking for in an event like this? I know what students are out there looking for, right? They're looking for email addresses, some contact information to get a little bit more information about the school, maybe to ask a couple questions that they're having trouble finding answers to. Um, what, what are you and your colleagues sort of doing in these, when, when you're involved in these events? Uh, I guess, what's in it for you? Um, and how can students sort of bring their, bring their A game so that this is productive for both sides? Well, um, I, I think the first thing, the first goal for admission counselors in an event like this is awareness. Um, we want to get awareness out about our institutions um, and certainly what we can offer. Um, then after awareness um, from the institution, we want to essentially gather leads yeah. um, of individuals who could be prospects for our institutions that we'll, we'll follow back up with. Um, but certainly we want to gather leads and those leads should generate applications and those applications then further generate um, enroll students. Yeah. Um, so, so that's our goal. And, and it's not the goal to achieve all those things in this one session. Sure. Um, it's all about just really getting to know you and you getting to know us. Um, but some advice I, I give to anyone approaching us um, in this is, you know, certainly be yourself and don't worry about perfection. Um, we know a lot of us, we're, we're going to meet you wherever you are. Um, you know, you wouldn't, if you had it all, you really wouldn't need us. Um, right. so, <laughs> That's great. Um, so don't be afraid of, of, of getting this wrong or, or saying the wrong things. I don't think you can really say the wrong things to any of us. And if you, and if it's something that's so egregious, we'll tell you because we don't want you to keep making that mistake. Sure. But certainly feel free to ask us anything you want to know. We're, we're glad to answer the questions. It's, it's such great advice, Giles. And I, I, I think it's important for students to know sort of two, two pieces of that. One is this is not an admissions interview. Mm-hmm. Right. This event is if there is an admissions interview as part of the process. Right. If a if a school offers interviews in their community or or if they offer interviews with alumni or whatever, that moment will come. But this moment is not that moment. Right. So everyone can take That's a deep correct. breath there. Is that right? That is correct. Yes. Yeah. And the second thing I think is cool. And I wasn't thinking about it this way until you said it. But, you know, for those folks who are having a little bit of cold feet or, or some butterflies around doing something like this, you are in effect, there's a recruitment process that's taking place even as you're seeking this information, right? So, so you're obviously looking for information, feedback, clarification on some questions, trying to get to know both some schools that you know about and maybe some schools that you don't. 
But also these schools are out here trying to recruit transitioning service members and military connected students, and you are those students. So I think that that can, that can help sort of soothe folks a little bit. Um, yes. so, so, so Emily Giles has given us sort of a great piece of takeaway advice, right? Which is to, to not, not worry too much about perfection here, um, to, 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 to come as you are, um, come prepared, come with some good questions, right? But to not, to not sweat it. Um, what would your piece of sort of take home advice be for folks as again, they're watching this uh, in preparation to attend this event on Thursday, October 28th, what would you say they should have top of mind um, as a piece of advice? Just generally, it's better to just ask. Don't leave, you know, if you have a question and a thought comes up, just ask it. We're here because, you know, the schools are here because they want to be here. Nobody's making us be here. We want to help. We want to be able to support you. So if you've got any questions as random as you think they might be, just ask um, and in, enjoy the process. Like it's exciting. It can be a little overwhelming too, but just enjoy exploring all these new schools and new options that you might, you know, possibly have. So. It's such an exciting time, isn't it? It's it is. It a, is. It's such it an is. exciting time. I always have a little, a, a, a little bit of sort of jealousy around folks who who are getting to start this process. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's just such an exciting thing. Um, mm -hmm. uh, two, two two last two last things for us before we wrap up here. I just want to um, I'm I'm going to ask folks to just say a word. I'm not sure Giles or Emily, which one of you wants to say a word about CMTE. Because in addition to the schools that we represent and in addition to the jobs that we do, we are all members of the Council on Military Transition to Education. And so there may be some opportunities there. But before we do that, um, uh, uh, Giles, I'll, I'll ask you, um, you said something important, or maybe it was Emily, uh, that this is just one piece of a process, right? That, that this is not... This is not the two hours where you're going to learn all the stuff. This is not the two hours where you're going to make your decision. By no means, this is just one piece of a larger process, not only to find a right fit college, but a little bit of self-discovery, perhaps. Um, asking some hard questions, not just of colleges, but of yourself around what it is you want, what your goals are. Um, does that feel to you, Giles, like the right way to think about this? Yes, I think it is a great way to think about it. And in my mind, I was just think, thinking about how this compared to some experiences that um, the participants may have had. Um, right. I, I, I equate this to you researching your branch of, of military that you joined on the internet and filling out an interest form on the internet at that point. Um, that didn't say you were joining that branch. Um, sure. It didn't commit you, but it certainly got your name on the radar of that branch. So they then reached back out to you. Um, the recruiter reached back out to you and, and answered any further clarifying, clarifying questions that you might have had about that branch um, before you actually, you know, signed your contract. So um, it's just like that. This is not, you know, you're not, you're not committing to anything when you talk to us. Um, and it's just information gathering and, and letting us know you're out there. The, I, I also, I have a little thing for the indefinite article versus the definite article the a versus the the, right? This isn't so much about finding the right fit school, right? I think for a lot of students, there are a lot of right fit schools out there. So, so you can also sort of release yourself from the pressure that you're out there to find the one. I don't, I don't know that that's the, the way to think about it. Emily, are you, a, are, you a, are you a believer that there are lots of right fit schools out there for students? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and that's what's so exciting is that there are so many options and so many opportunities and likely so many places that you will get a fantastic education and be very happy. And so I think that's the opportunity to take a little stress off yourself. It's not like you're trying to search for the one. There's mm -hmm. many out there and there's also many options. You may get an undergrad degree and decide you want a graduate or professional degree. Sure. And that's absolutely fine. And it doesn't mean that you find the one school and you're going to go there all the way through. Yeah. So there's many different options. And so, um, you know, that's like Giles said, you may come in with a list, explore that same amount that was on that list, but of different schools, you know, you never know. And so it's just, um, you know, just, just enjoy this opportunity, enjoy this process and, you know, uh, reach out to others to get, you know, advice and guidance and, and 
you know, let us know how we can help you. That's great. Um, yeah, some people may actually have found a right fit college and then discovered it wasn't a right fit college and are now in the process of revisiting those choices, right? And that happens all the time. That's why we we have transfer admissions programs. So very, very interesting. Uh, who'd like to say a quick word about CMTE? Because I think it's it's interesting relative to this conversation. All of us are involved in that organization. Um, are there ways that, that that organization plays a role here as well? Yeah, so I, I'll, I'll take that one. Um, so the Council on Mil Military Transition to Education, uh, we are an advisory committee um, of the Department of Defense. Um, we advise the Department of Defense on the TAP curriculum in particular um, mm -hmm. that military connected individuals will go through um, in their transition out of the military. Um, so we're behind the scenes advising on that. But we also, um, with my committee in particular, um, we're, I'm on the early engagement committee, so of the CMTE committee, of CMTE council. Um, we are also hosting a number of events that uh, could be helpful to you in the process. So um, coming up this year, we're having a series of Zoom lunches. Um, and during those Zoom lunches, you connect with us about different topics about going to Oh, that's awesome, college. Giles. Um, so there's an admission, there's one dedicated to just admission, another to financial aid and GI Bill, um, another to um, actually transitioning from service to school, um, and also just hearing from um, current um, military students who, who are attending these institutions. Um, so that's what we're about, and we're here working for you. There's a lot of help out there, everybody. Um, in fact, there's so much help that sometimes it can be hard to separate the signal from the noise. And that's why uh, an event like this, this virtual college fair is an opportunity for you to get, get a couple emails um, and, and, and get some contacts to, to help steward you through the process. Um, Emily and Giles, I'm so grateful to both of you. Thank you for taking a little bit of time out to be with us today. Um, again, the virtual college fair hosted by the Columbia University Center for Veteran Transition and Integration, Thursday, October 28th, 3 o'clock p.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. Uh, Eastern, 12 o'clock p.m. to 2 o'clock p.m. Pacific, something to something if you're in the middle, um, and, and you'll, you'll know when that is. We look forward to, to having you with us. Um, if you have any questions about the event, feel free to reach out to us directly at the center. That's cvti at columbia.edu. Um, Giles and Emily, thank you so much.